Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Rod Fleming in the Philippines here. So we're going to discuss today why AGPs simply can't pass. And I'm talking here about older AGPs. That's adult transitioning rather than adolescent transitioning AGPs. Before we do that, please remember to go to one of the, uh, the links that I'm about to put up. Um, send us something, please. Join the Patreon, donate a little bit, buy a coffee, something like that. We need it. Anyway, on with the show. Now, why is it that it is possible, and there are some are very confusing actually, for uh, adolescent transitioning AGPs, that's non-homosexual transitioners, uh, pseudo-transsexuals if you like, how, why is it that they can actually be quite passing and, and in fact very beautiful, and the adult transitioning ones, really it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And the answer is twofold. First of all, the process of masculinization, hormonal masculinization, um, has gone that much further in the uh, older group. You know, they actually are fully masculinized men at the point at which they transition. And, you know, hormones can do a lot, but they can't reverse the effects of testosterone. Testosterone is just too strong. So all of the things that uh, characterize a man, you know, the brow ridge, the skeletal forms that we discussed, all of these things, they're not going to go away. They're still going to be there. You can do the utmost you can to mask them and try to make yourself look more presentable, but it's not going to work. Whereas for the adolescent transitioning, uh, younger non-homosexual AGP, call it what you like, sometimes they like to be called shemales, um, they can be very convincing. It can be actually very beautiful, and it can be really striking. And it's because they were just that much younger when they started. They weren't masculinized. So they were able to suppress that. They were able to suppress the development of the heavy foreheads and all the rest of it. You know, and that just makes them look more feminine. But there's another thing which is really, really important, and people always forget it. And that is that your uh, adult or elderly transitioning AGP has been socialized as a man. They spent years learning how to be a man, right? And they might say, oh yeah, I always knew I was a girl and all the rest of it, but hey, the fact is, whether or not you did know that or whether or not you're just making it up, you actually did socialize as a man. You learned how to be a man. You learned how to play the male game. And that meant that you learned how to be assertive, dominant, um, organized. You learned how to get things done, uh, probably how to direct other people. Uh, you probably learned how to get the things that you wanted and you, were, you did not hesitate to use these skills to get the transition that you desired. But the fact is, that's not the way that women work. It just isn't. And the fact of your, uh, your male socialization is absolutely obvious. It's, I mean, I see it in the comments, comments section of this site. There are people on this site who claim that they are, well, true transsexuals. And yet when I read what they have to say, I go, that one there is an AGP. There's no two ways about it. That's an AGP. And you can tell. Because they're, the way that they work, the way that they react, the way that they address society is just too masculine. They've learned how to be masculine. I mean, if you go back to when you were you know, 14 or 15, most of us weren't very good at being you know, masculine. We were boys and we were trying to learn this business of what masculinity is, what it means. Yes, we were under the influence of testosterone, and yes, that made a big difference. But at the same time, there's a lot of things you just had to learn, you know? I mean, how did you learn the confidence to go up and stand up in front of a, um, if you've ever done this, I don't know, of a, a, a crowded room and speak to it, you know? I'm not saying women can't do that, but men address this in a different way. How did you 
uh, if you ever had to manage a project, get something done. How did you do it? And the way that men do it is very simple. They just tell people what to do. You do this, you do that, I'll do this. And that way we'll get it done. And women don't do that, no. They sit around and drink cups of tea and they'll discuss it and have dab de dab de dab de dab And eventually they might get it done, eventually they might not get it done, eventually they might get something completely different done. Who cares? It's not the way that, uh, that's the way that it is in the female brain. But for men, it's much more focused. We are like, yeah, we've got a problem, let's solve it, and let's get it done. Now, that can be problematic because you will see, particularly in this set, this older set, um, people claiming to be women, transitioned males. Uh, and I could mention a couple of names. Uh, Andrea James would be one. Um, Deirdre McCloskey would be another. Uh, they're much of an older generation now and, and really in many ways much less influential. But still as absolutely resolutely masculine as they ever were. There's nothing feminine about these people at all. Just nothing. Um, whereas if you were to compare those with uh, HSTS, older HSTS people like, uh, I don't know, like Bambi or April Ashley or various others around about the place, you know, that are now the grand dam of uh, transsexualism, they're totally different. They're old women. They're not old men pretending to be women. This is a really different thing, you know. And that's why, you know, for an EGP, if you want to actually pass, and I mean convincingly pass, you know, people will just not notice. It's going to be really hard for you. You're going to have to change. You're have to going to start really young, very young. As soon as your condition appears, as soon as you become aware that you have this form of gender dysphoria, then you need to do that. And the thing is that, especially in AGP, because there's a there's a problem with AGP in that it's, it promotes um, a very weak and variable self ideation. So the people aren't really sure. Most people who have AGP aren't really sure they're AGP. I mean, they might call it something else, but they, they have this form of dysphoria, but they're not really sure. And so unlike an HSTS, HSTS are always very sure what they want, and that is a man, if they're female, if they're male rather. They want a man. Hmm. And what do we have to do to get a man? Do I have to look beautiful? I'll look beautiful. Not a problem. I can do that. And off they go and they do it. And they come back and you see these, these women who just... They're ravishing, and they, they, they know what they're doing. There's never any doubt in their minds what they're up to. The ones who are problematic are the ATPs because of this weak self ideation So it's, you know, from the point of view of counselling them, it's really complicated. Do you say, look, just get on with it and do it, right? And don't arse about, get on with it and do it. Or do you say, no, 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 wait for a while, wait for a while. Because you know that waiting for a while will make the chances of them successfully transitioning slimmer. It will be less likely that they can. So this is a real difficult problem. You know, it's something you have to look at. And each case is, is different. I mean, I'm getting, for at the moment, I'm getting a lot of um, viewer responses coming from India. And India is a special case. It's not like the West. India is a special case because in India... Uh, like most of Southeast Asia and East Asia, South Asia, the whole, in fact, really most of the planet, female virginity is really highly prized, right? It's not something you touch. And if you were to, you might well end up dead with a pick in the back of your head, you know? That means that women are just not available. For younger males who are at the peak of, you know, the point at which testosterone is just going nuts, going absolutely nuts in their body. They can't even really see women, you know? <laughs> and Indian society makes it absolutely impossible for them, especially the middle class, to employ a prostitute. They can't do it. It's, it's a social taboo. You're not allowed to do that. So you get these boys who get into the, a real terrible mess where their masturbatory fantasies become very intense and then they can actually become AGP at this point, and they're hopelessly confused. They, I mean, I speak to people who are basically 
Hmm, well, they're, they're, they're in a bad way. You know, they're basket cases. And the question is, should they transition or should they get through this and then get married and carry on life normally? That's not an easy call. Yes, I know every TRA on the planet will say, oh, you should transition immediately. Blah, 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 blah. No. No, that is not right. The transition express train is something we're going to have to derail. Everybody's different. Some people, for some people, that would be appropriate. Yeah, I'd agree with that, but not for everyone. And that's something that the, the dealing with these people from India has made it very clear to me that, you know, it's not fair to put these, these one-size-fits-all solutions onto individuals, because everybody's different, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with being AGP. That's, that's as far as we can see, it, it's a fairly harmless condition, which can be managed in several ways, most of which don't actually involve very much, you know. Uh, and that's what it should be done. It should be managed. You don't, most AGPs don't actually really need to transition at all. And they would frankly be better off not doing so. But here you go, especially the elderly ones. Now, not, not so much the young ones. The young ones, it's a bit different because, you know, when you're young, you still have that chance. You know, if you're, if you're 15, 16, you still have that chance of making it and being sufficiently feminine to pass. And, and let's not make any bones about this. Passing is the key. If you don't pass, then you're going to have to bully society into accepting you as a woman. And society isn't going to do that. Why would we? You know, we're always going to see you as being a bit different. So you're de then de dependent on other people's charity, which is not a very nice place to be. So there is a problem. <clears throat> Generally speaking, I would say that AGPs just, especially if they're the elderly type, that's over 30, really over 25, I'd say. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I would say indulge it or rather manage it in some way that does not involve transition. Just don't do transition because it's not going to work for you. I'm sorry, it just isn't. You know, you're going to walk into every room that you walk into. People are going to go, oh, tranny. Whereas for an HSTS, you know, they're just not even going to see she's there. She's going to be invisible. And most HSTS are, in fact, invisible. They walk into the rooms and nobody knows they're there. People are shocked if they're, they uh, for some reason, told, a friend of mine, we lately uh, suffered a transphobic attack because by a long, very strange sequence of events, somebody uh, who turned out to be not a nice person discovered her background and also knew her address. Um, and this was, it got pretty nasty. So the, 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 the lady in question had to reveal her status to the police. And the police, you know, you, the police were like, you what? Because <laughs> you know, they were used to... to uh, the, the AGP model of, of transitioner who's six foot two, you know, and like this, you know, and there she is, she's all petite and slender and pretty and, you know, and just looks like a nice, pretty mum, basically. Uh, and they were, you know, and it's very difficult for people in situations like that. I mean, they're, they're having to, to reveal secrets that they've kept so close for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. That's what I mean. HSTS, you don't, know, you don't know how many people you know are HSTS. Because they are not going to tell you. Whereas the AGPs, you're all... Even with the, the, the adolescent transitioning ones, you, you're, you're going to be pretty sure what you're looking at. You are. It's like, aye, aye. We know what we're dealing with here. As they get older, if they're over 30, I would say over 25, no transition, full-time transition. It's just not going to work. Sorry. It isn't. People are going to know. And if people know, then the, the whole thing is like, why bother? Just, you know, dress at weekends. You know? Why not just do that? Have a normal life. Explain to your wife, you know, I've got this kink. I like to fit, dress up as a woman. Can we indulge me on Saturdays and Sundays? And, you know, if it's that, or being told she has to turn into a lesbian, what do you think a woman's going to do? I think I know what most women would do. They would say, okay, you know, I love this guy. I married him for a reason. We've got kids. I'll do everything I can to try and control this situation. Short of becoming a lesbian. I mean, why would a woman do that? 
Anyway, that's enough of the, that's my thoughts on that for just now. Bye 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 bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.